Has the Niger mining sector failed? A video depicting the seizure of $100 million worth of gold from Niger and Ethiopia en route to Dubai has gone viral. Despite the apparent challenge, Niger has shown resilience and is confronting all obstacles. The leadership has made bold decisions that have surprised the entire world, and some of these choices have led to a decline in Niger's mining sector. However, these tough decisions were taken to address the flaws within the mining sector. But what exactly did they do? Let's find out. In recent days, a viral video capturing the seizure of $100 million worth of gold from Niger in Ethiopia, en route to Dubai, has started a firestorm on social media platforms. This incident has thrust Niger into the spotlight, triggering a series of events that have resonated throughout the nation. In response to the unfolding controversy, General Abdur Rahman, Niger's interim president, has taken swift and decisive action, resulting in the suspension of all mining licenses in the country. The video, widely circulated on social media, shows the dramatic seizure of a substantial amount of gold at an undisclosed location in Ethiopia. The gold, valued at $100 million, was reportedly destined for Dubai. The video's authenticity has been debated, with various experts and authorities examining its origins and legitimacy. The viral video has not only captured the attention of global audiences, but has also cast a shadow over Niger's mining industry. The nation, rich in natural resources, including gold, has been a hub for mining activities, contributing significantly to its economy. However, in the wake of this controversy, General Abdur Rahman has decided to take firm action to address the situation. In response to the viral video and the subsequent concerns raised by the public, General Abdur Rahman, who assumed the role of interim president during a critical juncture in Niger's political time, has taken proactive measures. The immediate suspension of all mining licenses in the country is a bold step aimed at conducting a thorough investigation into the alleged gold seizure. General Abdur Rahman emphasized the need for transparency and accountability in the mining sector. He stated that suspending mining licenses is a temporary measure to allow for a comprehensive review of existing practices, regulations, and compliance within the industry. The interim president has pledged to take corrective actions based on the investigation findings. Niger's economy has been significantly influenced by its mining activities, particularly the extraction of gold. The suspension of mining licenses, even if temporary, has raised concerns about the economic repercussions for the nation. The mining sector has been a vital source of revenue and employment, and any disruption could have a cascading effect on the overall economy. However, General Abdur Rahman has assured the public that the suspension is necessary to safeguard the mining industry's integrity. He emphasized the importance of responsible and ethical practices to ensure that the nation's natural resources are managed sustainably for the benefit of its citizens. The controversy surrounding the gold seizure video has not gone unnoticed internationally. Various countries, organizations, and individuals have expressed interest in the unfolding events, calling for a thorough and impartial investigation. The incident has sparked discussions about transparency, accountability, and ethical practices in the global trade of precious minerals. As the video depicts the gold seizure in Ethiopia, the Ethiopian government has also been scrutinized. Questions have been raised about the effectiveness of security measures and regulatory frameworks to prevent such incidents. The Ethiopian authorities have pledged cooperation in the investigation and are committed to addressing any lapses in their systems. Why has General Abdur Rahman suspended all mining licenses? The recent suspension of mining licenses in Niger comes as a direct response to the alarming gold seizure incident in Ethiopia. Under the leadership of General Abdur Rahman, the interim government has taken a decisive step to address the controversy and has expressed a strong commitment to conduct a comprehensive audit of the nation's mining sector. This bold move clearly signals the government's dedication to enhancing transparency and legitimacy within the country's mining industry. The gold seizure incident, captured in a viral video, has not only raised eyebrows globally, but has also prompted internal scrutiny of Niger's mining practices. General Abdur Rahman's government aims to tackle the issue head-on, 
by initiating a thorough investigation into the mining sector. The suspension of mining licenses is a proactive measure intended to provide the necessary space for a detailed audit to assess the industry's compliance with regulations, ethical standards, and overall operational transparency. By taking this bold step, General Abdur Rahman is committed to addressing potential irregularities within the mining sector. The decision to temporarily halt all mining licenses highlights the government's dedication to ensuring the credibility of mining operations in Niger. It reflects a recognition of the need for responsible and accountable practices in managing the country's valuable natural resources. The suspension of mining licenses serves as a preemptive action to prevent further complications from questionable mining activities. This move indicates that the interim government is not only focused on resolving the immediate controversy, but is also determined to implement long-term solutions to strengthen the integrity of the mining sector. General Abdur Rahman's administration appears committed to creating an environment where mining operations align with ethical standards and adhere to established regulations. The decision to conduct a thorough audit of the mining sector is a strategic move that aims to uncover potential issues, ensuring that the industry operates within the bounds of legality and transparency. This process will likely involve a comprehensive review of existing mining licenses, operational practices, and regulatory frameworks. The goal is to identify and rectify any lapses that may have contributed to the gold seizure incident in Ethiopia. Emphasizing transparency and legitimacy within the mining industry aligns with broader global efforts to promote responsible resource management. The controversy surrounding the gold seizure incident has not only captured the attention of the local population, but has also drawn international interest. In light of this, General Abdur Rahman's government recognizes the importance of addressing the issue in a manner that meets national and international expectations for ethical and responsible mining practices. While the suspension of mining licenses may raise concerns about the potential economic impact on Niger, General Abdur Rahman has emphasized that this measure is temporary. The goal is not to stifle economic activity, but to create an environment conducive to responsible mining practices. The government's commitment to conducting a thorough audit indicates a desire to balance economic development and sustainable resource management. But the question is, what led to the seizure of gold worth $100 million? Here's a reminder to please like and share the video and subscribe to our channel to watch more videos on black culture, history, civilization, and identity. Let's continue now. The blocked gold, believed to have originated from Niger, has triggered widespread concern and skepticism due to its apparent lack of official backing. The absence of proper documentation and transparency in the acquisition process has cast doubts on the legitimacy of the gold, prompting the government to respond swiftly and decisively. General Abdur Rahman's administration has taken bold steps to address the growing controversy, including suspending all mining licenses in the country. The lack of official backing for the intercepted gold has raised serious questions about the transparency and legality of its acquisition. In response to these concerns, General Abdur Rahman's government has opted for a proactive approach to tackle potential wrongdoings within the mining sector. The decision to suspend all mining licenses clearly indicates the seriousness with which the government views the situation. This measure is aimed at addressing the immediate issue and conducting a thorough examination of the broader mining industry. One significant move signaling the government's commitment to accountability is the dismissal of approximately 100 individuals associated with the gold shipment's departure point at NEM Airport. This action highlights the administration's determination to hold those involved accountable for any lapses in protocol or illicit activities related to the gold in question. By taking such decisive steps, General Abdur Rahman's government sends a strong message that it will not tolerate any wrongdoing within the mining sector. The dismissal of individuals connected to the NEM Airport where the gold shipment originated, is a strategic move to rectify potential wrongdoings at the source. This action aligns with the government's commitment to root out corruption, irregularities, or unethical practices within the mining supply chain. It demonstrates a willingness to address issues at the surface and core levels, ensuring that accountability measures are implemented throughout the process. 
The suspension of all mining licenses is a broader measure aimed at conducting a comprehensive review of the mining sector's practices, regulations, and compliance. This temporary halt provides the government with the necessary space to thoroughly investigate the acquisition and transportation of the gold. The goal is to identify systemic issues, loopholes, or gaps in the regulatory framework that may have contributed to the lack of official backing for the intercepted goal. General Abdul Rahman's administration recognizes the importance of restoring public trust in the mining industry. By taking swift and decisive action, including suspending mining licenses and dismissing individuals involved in the gold shipment, the government is signaling its commitment to transparency and accountability. Building confidence in the mining sector is crucial for the nation's economic stability and fostering trust among domestic and international investors. The dismissed individuals from Enim Airport will likely undergo further scrutiny as part of the ongoing investigation. The government's commitment to a thorough and impartial review suggests that anyone found guilty of wrongdoing will be held accountable, contributing to the overall objective of rectifying and preventing similar incidents in the future. This approach reflects a dedication to cleaning up the mining sector and ensuring it operates by ethical standards and legal requirements. What is the impact on the mining sector in Niger? Knowing that this would impact Niger's mining sector, why did leadership still take this decision? The suspension of all mining licenses in Niger, encompassing not only gold but also uranium, signifies a strategic and comprehensive move by the self-appointed military government. Unlike a reactive measure that addresses the recent gold seizure incident, this decision is part of a larger plan to overhaul the mining sector. The temporary halt in granting new licenses is a crucial step in a broader effort to conduct a comprehensive audit and implement substantial reforms within the industry. The decision to suspend licenses for uranium, a key resource in Niger's mining portfolio, underlines the depth of the government's commitment to restructuring the sector. Uranium holds particular significance for Niger, as the nation is renowned for its substantial production in the global uranium market. Recognizing the pivotal role of the mining industry, especially in uranium extraction, the government is taking proactive measures to ensure transparency, accountability, and sustainable practices. This move is not solely reactive to the recent gold seizure incident, but rather indicative of a strategic vision to bring about lasting changes within the mining sector. The comprehensive audit accompanying the suspension of licenses aims to identify and rectify systemic issues regulatory shortcomings or lapses in compliance. The government seeks to instill a culture of responsibility and integrity within the industry by addressing these underlying factors. The temporary suspension of mining licenses is a clear acknowledgement by the military government of the need for substantial reforms. This pause allows for a thorough evaluation of existing practices, regulations, and the overall governance structure of the mining sector. The goal is to create an environment that fosters ethical mining practices, aligns with international standards, and contributes to the sustainable development of Niger's rich natural resources. Niger's position as a significant player in the global uranium market adds complexity and importance to the developments in the mining sector. The nation's economic future is closely tied to the responsible management of its mining resources, particularly uranium. By implementing reforms and ensuring the integrity of mining operations, the government aims to safeguard the interests of its citizens and bolster its standing in the global market. The reforms within the mining sector extend beyond mere regulatory adjustments. The government intends to create a framework that promotes responsible resource management, encourages foreign and domestic investments, and ensures that the benefits derived from mining activities are equitably distributed. This holistic approach recognizes the interconnectedness of the mining industry's economic, social, and environmental aspects. The decision to suspend mining licenses reflects a willingness to confront challenges head-on and initiate changes that will have a lasting impact on the nation's economic trajectory. In the face of controversy, the government's proactive stance sends a clear message that it is committed to creating a mining sector characterized by transparency, accountability, and sustainability. This commitment is not only crucial for addressing immediate concerns, but is also instrumental in shaping a positive and responsible future for Niger's mining industry.
How have illicit mineral smuggling and trade deals affected Niger? In recent years, Niger has faced significant financial losses attributed to illicit mineral smuggling and unfavorable trade deals negotiated by previous administrations. The interim leadership, headed by General Abdur Rahman, has recognized the urgency of addressing these challenges and has taken proactive measures to initiate change. The suspension of mining licenses is considered a positive and assertive step toward curbing illegal activities and promoting responsible mining practices. Through this action, the government aims to rectify past mistakes and pave the way for a more sustainable and economically viable mining sector. One of the major issues plaguing Niger in recent times has been the substantial financial losses incurred due to illicit mineral smuggling. This clandestine activity not only deprives the nation of much needed revenue, but also damages the integrity of the mining sector. Additionally, unfavorable trade deals negotiated by previous administrations have further exacerbated the economic challenges faced by the country. In response to these pressing issues, the leadership, led by General Abdur Rahman, has demonstrated a proactive approach. The decision to suspend mining licenses is a strategic move to address the root causes of financial losses and promote transparency within the mining industry. By temporarily suspending the issuance of new licenses, the government seeks to review existing practices, close loopholes, and implement reforms that will help curb illicit activities. The suspension of mining licenses is not merely punitive, but a constructive step toward building a more accountable and sustainable mining sector. The government recognizes the need for a comprehensive review of the industry, and this temporary halt provides the necessary space for such an assessment. It allows for an in-depth examination of the mining sector's regulatory framework, licensing procedures, and overall governance. The decision to suspend mining licenses is viewed positively by many as a commitment to rectifying past mistakes. It signals the government's intent to break away from the legacy of illicit activities and unfavorable trade deals that have hampered the country's economic progress. General Abdur Rahman's administration is actively working towards creating an environment where responsible mining practices prevail, ensuring that the benefits of the country's natural resources are maximized. Promoting responsible mining practices is a key objective of the government's strategy. By doing so, the interim leadership aims to restore public confidence in the mining sector and attract investments contributing to sustainable economic development. The suspension of mining licenses is symbolic, demonstrating the government's dedication to fostering a transparent and accountable mining industry. As part of its broader efforts, the government will likely conduct a thorough audit of the mining sector during the license suspension period. This audit will help identify and rectify past irregularities and lay the groundwork for a more robust and well-regulated industry. The goal is to create a framework that deters illicit activities and encourages responsible mining practices, benefiting the nation and its citizens. What changes can be expected in the mining industry after all this? As the audit and overhaul of Niger's mining sector are currently in progress, there is a sense of anticipation regarding the comprehensive reforms that may be introduced to foster sustainable and responsible mining practices in the country. The government's commitment to transparency and legitimacy within the industry marks a significant shift and signals a new direction for Niger's mining sector. The long-term implications of these changes will be contingent on the findings of the sector audit and any subsequent regulatory adjustments implemented by the government. The ongoing audit of the mining sector is a crucial step in the government's effort to understand the industry's difficulties thoroughly. It involves thoroughly examining existing practices, regulations, and compliance mechanisms. This comprehensive review aims to identify areas where improvements can be made to ensure responsible resource management, ethical mining practices, and adherence to international standards. The anticipation of comprehensive reforms arises from the understanding that the audit is not a superficial exercise, but a strategic initiative to address systemic issues within the mining sector. The government's commitment to transparency and legitimacy suggests a willingness to confront challenges head-on and to make the necessary adjustments for the long-term benefit of the nation. The envisaged reforms may encompass various aspects of the mining industry. This could include refining licensing procedures, 
enhancing regulatory frameworks and strengthening oversight mechanisms. Additionally, there may be a focus on promoting community engagement, ensuring that local populations benefit from mining activities, and implementing measures to mitigate environmental impacts. The government's commitment to transparency is particularly crucial in rebuilding public trust in the mining sector. By prioritizing openness and legitimacy, the authorities aim to foster a sense of accountability and responsibility within the industry. This, in turn, could attract more domestic and international investments, contributing to the nation's economic development. The success of these reforms will hinge on the willingness of the government to act on the findings of the audit and to implement necessary changes. If the audit identifies systemic issues or regulatory gaps, it will be imperative for the government to take corrective measures promptly. Effective and timely implementation of reforms is essential to ensure the sustainability and success of the mining sector overhaul. Furthermore, the government's commitment to responsible mining practices is likely to have positive implications for Niger's international standing. It may lead to increased collaboration with global partners, adherence to international standards, and participation in initiatives promoting ethical resource extraction. This, in turn, could enhance the nation's reputation and attractiveness to investors and stakeholders in the global mining community. While the anticipation of reforms is high, it's important to recognize that the success of these changes will depend on the collaborative efforts of all stakeholders, including government bodies, industry players, and local communities. Effective communication and cooperation will be vital to implement reforms that not only address immediate concerns, but also establish a foundation for the sustainable development of Niger's mining sector. So, while this might look like a setback, Niger has used this as an opportunity to become better. Do you believe Niger is heading in the right direction? How can its mining sector experience improvement? Will these challenging decisions put an end to shortcomings in the mining industry? Let us know in the comments section. Has the coup in Niger brought positive changes for the country? Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon next to it. We have decided to bring videos on something nobody talks about, the black culture, civilization, history, and evidence about how glorious blacks have been. Thanks for watching, and until the next video, stay tuned.